<laughs> Greetings people, I come in peace. Can somebody enlighten me on what was the point of that latest Tyson Fury press conference? Are they that desperate? This was purely a PR stunt to try to get the fans behind the fight and Fury and a therapy session to boost and build confidence. Well that's how it came across to me. What does it say about a person when they need their ego constantly stroked? I've never seen anybody call a press conference to convince the public that they're really, really awesome. Usyk and his team must be laughing. <laughs> it really smacks of desperation. It honestly does. If you asked any of the media there what they learned, did they learn anything new? They'd be scraping the bottom of the pot. We didn't learn anything new. Fury brought up that many cruiserweights have come up to heavyweight and been found wanting. Okay, well, that's true, but it's the same the other way around. Many smaller men have beaten bigger men. It's to do with styles. For instance, if a smaller man elects to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a big man, he's likely to lose. Smaller men beat bigger men with movement, heart, speed and agility. I've done a video about big heavyweights against smaller heavyweights and the history. Comparing David Hay losing to Klitschko and Holyfield losing to Lennox Lewis isn't telling the whole story. David Hay beat um, Nikolai Valuev, remember? Seven foot with an 85 inch reach, I believe. Evander Holyfield beat Riddick Bowe, amongst other top heavyweights. So saying smaller boxers really beat good big boxers is a fallacy. In Usyk, you have an elite, well-proportioned heavyweight against a good big boxer in Tyson Fury. I don't think size is going to be as much of an issue as many think. Alexander is quick and sharp. Fury only has to be out of position and unbalanced for a moment and he'll get punished. He has to be flawless and I don't think he can be. AJ is an elite heavyweight, an Olympic gold medalist, two-time unified champion and Usyk beat him without controversy. Usyk is an anomaly in the boxing ring. He's a bit of an enigma outside it. So all that waffling that Fury's doing, he really cannot find a historical comparison anywhere that matches up to Usyk's skills. He really can't. On top of that, there's a litany of men with the same dimensions as Usyk who have demolished bigger fighters. Not average big men, mind you, but good big men who were champions. I noticed that Sugar Hill looked a bit subdued. He parroted the same cods wallop about a bigger man with the same skills as a smaller man. The bigger man wins. But they haven't got the same skills though. If Usyk and Fury were balanced in skill, speed and agility, then I'd understand that statement. But that's not the case. Usyk throws more punches. He gives you more angles, he has faster feet and hands, and a better gas tank. Fury is tricking himself and grasping at straws. I don't blame him. Usyk is licking his chops. He practically salivates when he sees Fury, a la Pavlov's dog. I think this conference must have been organised by the Sheik. It was all of a sudden. I'm a little concerned by the favouritism shown to Fury. Turkey hasn't made it a secret that he has a preference for him. Tyson, no. What is in my mind and the map for us together? Yes. We want Tyson for five, seven, ten, five more. You talk. You talk. He showed his true colours, didn't he? What do you mean? He's, he's alright. He seems like a good bloke. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, best. Better not say anything then. Watch your back. You are the, the most uh, beautiful diamond in the boxing fighters. That's only. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. But you know what you have, what you have in my heart? Yes, I know, I, I know. You, one of the best fighters in the generation, and I am thinking we will have big relationship next in boxing field. Perfect. You know, you are now the most expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey, HMRC might be listening. Stop. <laughs> the numbers, but you know how much you get. Yes, yes. And you deserve it. Thank you very much. But you can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. Have no doubt, 
Turkey is the puppet master here. He's bankrolling the fight and the fight is in his country and he has a clear partisanship towards Fury. Usyk might be up against it a bit but he's no stranger to fighting in enemy territory. I'm convinced that Fury's team are blowing smoke up his ass. Talk about over-egging the pudding. When asked how they thought the fight would go, Sugar said knockout. Spence said knockout within, within eight rounds. Fury's dad first said it will be a chess match, but quickly changed his tune after being told he's hurting the viewing figures or something. Frank said knockout as well. I'm not assured they sincerely believe what they were saying. The whole thing was about heaping adulation, plaudits and flattery on Fury. I bet his poop smells like sandalwood. Frank Warren visibly and audibly said that Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in his lifetime. No, seriously, I saw his lips move. I first thought he must mean Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight he's promoted, surely. But no, I heard it right the first time. He said Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight he's seen in his lifetime. Now Frank is in his 70s, which would mean he was born in around the early 50s. So he expects us to believe that Tyson Fury is better than all of those great heavyweights of the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Really? Think about that. Better than Joe Louis, Ezra Charles, Jersey Joe Walker, Rocky Marciano of the 50s, Floyd Patterson, Sonny Liston, Joe Fraser, George Foreman, Leon Spinks, um, Ken Norton, Ernie Shavers, they're in the 60s and 70s, Larry Holmes, Tim Witherspoon, Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, Ray Mercer, Michael Mora, Riddick Bowe, uh, Lennox Lewis. And how about Vitaly Klitschko? These guys of the 80s, 90s and the 2000s. And there's hundreds more. I honestly think George Chavalo and Jerry Cooney could beat Fury. I know the mainstream boxing media was only there to kiss Tyson Fury's feet. No one was going to rattle his cage or ask any difficult questions. They weren't there for that. But how can so many of the boxing media keep a straight face when Frank came out with that? And if Fury is such a boxing historian, how can he not be embarrassed? Unless he's a narcissist. I can comprehend Simon Jordan and Andy Goldstein and Darren Bent gobbling up that claptrap. But come on, how can people who are supposed to know boxing and its history put up with that? To me, it was one big televised therapy session. As I said earlier, it's embarrassing that a grown man needs other grown men to idolise and venerate him. They were acting like puffers. Anyway, I just wanted to give my view on that press conference. It was a bit weird, to say the least. Maybe Fury was going to pull out. Maybe he needed a confidence boost. Maybe there was too much negative talk about the fight and if he was going to turn up. And maybe they're just reassuring people. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for listening. Please subscribe if you want. And remember, choose life. Thank you.